Hey guys, and welcome back. We got our hands full today with an Alltech boom truck. This valve bank, this VPL Parker valve bank, has sprung a leak. We were here pretty much a week ago troubleshooting some pretty funky hydraulic problems. <laughs> this is pretty funny actually because all we had to do was refer to page 64 of the operator's manual. We had to instruct the operator of the truck on how to properly warm up the hydraulic oil. We were pretty cold outside, it was reading minus 20. And the complaint was the cylinder drift. As soon as he let go of the function, it would continue to move for about two to three seconds. There's a switch in the back of the truck. You just flick that. You can hold a lever over a relief. You can do a couple of different things, but that actually doesn't warm up the oil up in the boom. So what we had to do, and this, this is actually instructed on page 64 of the operator's manual, by the way. So there's this tool circuit up in the bucket. If you wanted to use some hydraulic tools, you can, right? Some crimpers, cutters, whatever the case may be. Anyways, so you have a 500 PSI pilot circuit up in the bucket of this truck. So in the manual, it tells you to use this warm-up hose in the, in the tool circuit and to enable the tool circuit. So this, this warm-up hose, I actually built one. It's just a quick connect, number six, JIC hose, except it's got a little orifice. I went with a 1 16th, which is actually 1.5 millimeters. All we had to do was plumb this hose into the quick connect supply for the tool circuit, flick that valve on, and then it created a bit of resistance for that oil to flow. And you guys know what happens when you put resistance up against flow, right? So you guys are probably going to laugh at me, but I forgot my colored zip ties at home. So now we have to resort to giving each hose a serial number and using this video as documentation. I actually prefer this method because there's a lot less waste and potential for getting cut on some improperly cut zip ties. So short story long, we're going to be just doing a plain Jane reseal on this valve bank. We're taking all this stuff apart so that we can reassemble it in the exact same, maybe if not better position than when we found it. It's important to plan out this job depending on what kind of parts and tools that you're going to need. In this case, I obviously fucked up because <laughs> I forgot my colored zip ties. But that leads me to an interesting question. What method do you guys use to identify your hoses or your wiring or whatever the case may be for disassembly? Leave that down in the comments below. Okay, so 102 goes here, 101 goes here. Once we peel that off, we got 200 goes down there. So here we got the valve bank on the bench. We got her all torn apart and we found the source of the leak. In this case, it's pretty simple. We got the rebuild kit, we got the manuals. We're gonna disassemble everything, including all the levers, basically do an overhaul on her, bring her back to factory specs. My background allowed me to take on these kinds of jobs because early on in my career, I was a heavy duty tech before I got into truck engine diagnosing. As a heavy duty tech, you deal mainly in hydraulics. So I've seen it all. I've seen cylinders explode, functions go limp, priority valves not prioritizing the flow of hydraulic oil. I've also seen load sense systems not working at all the way that they were supposed to, stalling out an engine. I've seen high resistance return back to tank due to incorrect viscosity hydraulic oil. Also, hydraulic systems are so susceptible to dirt. When's the last time you guys changed your hydraulic filters? <laughs> 